Oh, oh. This is the so, something. Get it. Pick. Got it. Good. Uh, this is the third part of the mini for some parameter families of hyperbolic iterative function systems on the line. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, this is a picture about transversality because the transversality is a very, very important assumption uh, uh, in the, the last uh, CRM, CRM 4. I mean, I forgot to mention transversality. Mark was so kind to call my attention to that. So I would like to emphasize what transversality is again. So one more time, you take uh, an element from the symbolic space I and J. Uh, so what is the symbolic space? Uh, we have always had a maps. So what is K for Mark? It is M for me. Because we have M maps and we take the one side infinite sequences and, and their collection is the symbolic space. So our maps are like M1, F, M. And we have a natural projection. We project these people down in a way that we take the limit and tends to infinity f i one i n, which always means for me f i one the position i n, uh, and, and you apply it at zero or any any number you wish. This is the natural projection. Now uh, the transversality condition holds it for every i and j. Uh, such that I1 is different from J1. It's very important that for every, and that's why it's a, a strong assumption, you take uh, this line is the projection. So this line, the red line, is long dot pi long dot i. This is the red line. And the blue line is long dot pi long dot j. So this is the blue line. And the transversality condition holds if for every R, what you see it is that you collect those parameters, these parameters, when the red line and the blue line, they have difference, they are closer to each other than R. This is the parameter, uh, the set of those parameters for which this inequality holds. And the transversality condition is the assumption that the, the Lebesgue measure of the length of this uh, parameter interval is less than constant times r. This beautiful picture is from a paper of Istvan Koloshvari and Balaj Balaj. And Istvan told me that the picture was prepared by Balaj, actually. So, it, and, and a very nice, thank you. So this is a, this is the transversality condition. So for every i and j, and for every positive i, always every, always every, assuming that i1 is different from j1, if, uh, always every, if uh, the parameter domain for which this inequality holds has lengths less than constant times r, then the transversality holds. OK. Uh, so uh, I just like to recall, oh my God, uh, uh, my uh, last CRM uh, where I met, uh, forgot to mention transversality. So the CRM says that there were smooth these assumptions, which means that everybody is very smooth because now we consider iterated function system which depend on a parameter, we call it F uh, long dot. And we assume that this dependence is very smooth indeed. And we are given a, a, a family for the same lambdas uh, of, of Gibbs measures uh, on the symbolic space. And uh, we, uh, these Gibbs measures are, uh, they correspond to the continuous potential, uh, uh, which, which are given here. And there are two very important uh, assumptions, but you can read here, we, we have gone through that. And if it happens, uh, and so all of these conditions, all that I'd like to uh, yet again emphasize the transversality condition, which is over there, and what I forgot last time, uh, but we can do nothing without transversality condition here. Uh, then, uh, uh, then, then what happens it is, uh, that uh, for almost all choice of lambda, uh, whenever the ratio f over Yakunov exponent is bigger than one, 
uh, then this push forward measure is absolutely continuous. Uh, this was uh, CRM number four, and we will come back to this CRM uh, later. Uh, I, I just like to speak a little bit similar things. Uh, I, I am not going to introduce new CRM, just make a little summary in a special case. So yet again, the alphabet is the uh, uh, this uh, uh, number from, from one to n, and uh, we consider uh, this iterative function system, which is now uh, denoted by psi, and then this is a, a collection of contractive uh, uh, C1 plus uh, uh, eta maps uh, on this compact interval X. We always assume this inequality uh, that we are given uh, this gamma one uh, and uh, gamma two, uh, such that uh, the derivative of every maps at every point is in between uh, these two people. So uh, for every I and for every X, from capital X. Thank you very much. So it's, uh, and then uh, this is always the, 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 the symbolic space. And then I just throw down again, for, uh, also Mark spoke about it. This is the pressure function. This is T and the dependence on T appears there. And uh, we have already, uh, seen it several times. Uh, so we consider this potential. This is, sorry, the, the potential, but always appears so constant times this. So I, I just uh, like to write it down. Uh, omega is the logarithm of, uh, and then you take the derivative and omega one and the projection of uh, sigma uh, or omega an absolute value. So this uh, appears, and here uh, omega is an element of sigma. Uh, okay, so so this appears always, and then we say that the measure is equilibrium state. Anti Kaimaki uh, spoke about this kind of things that that there exists a measure. Uh, so so for it is it is an equilibrium state for the potential t times p. p t is a positive number. So the measure is an equilibrium state for this uh, uh, potential if this blue uh, equality holds so that the pressure is the entropy plus T times uh, the integral of phi, but the integral of phi is just the negative uh, of the Yakunov exponents. Uh, so H mu plus T times the negative of the Yakunov exponent is equal to uh, the, the pressure. Then we say that this is an equilibrium state. Uh, this is an equilibrium state for the potential t times phi. Now, what is the good t? The good choice of t, because I just said that this is an equilibrium state for the potential t times phi. Somewhere it should be written, but I don't find it. But nevertheless, it, it is here, potential t times phi. But what is the good choice for t? The good choice for t is the t which is called actually s. Uh, which solves the Bowen's equation, so for which this pressure function is zero. And when we choose this right potential, so this potential, the previous T is actually S, this S. When we choose this potential that I show you, we choose this potential, then the equilibrium for this particular potential, let me call it perhaps geometric potential, the equilibrium for this geometric potential is called the equilibrium for the iterated function system. So if mu is the equilibrium measure for the iterated function system, then uh, uh, this S, uh, which is the solution of the Bauer's formula, is entropy of this particular measure divided by the Yakunov exponent of this measure. Okay, now uh, here is uh, uh, just a simple consequence of the CRM4 that I mentioned previously. So uh, psi lambda is a parameterized iterative function system, which is very smooth and uh, which is a transverse R family. And then mu lambda is the equilibrium measure for psi lambda. I just explained what it means that mu lambda is equilibrium measure for psi lambda and S lambda is a solution of the Bowen equation. Then from our CRM, CRM4 actually, 
What we get it is that the whole stored dimension of the push forward part measure is what it has to be. So actually, it can be expressed by the solution of the Bauer's formula. And if uh, uh, the solution of the Bauer's formula gives you a number which is bigger than one, for those parameters, almost all of those parameters, or this, this solution is bigger than one, almost all of the parameters uh, the push forward measure is an absolute continuous measure. So it gives a, a complete answer. And one more time, the novelty is that here not only uh, the, uh, the, the projection depends on lambda, but the novelty is that the measure also depends on lambda and previously it never happened. So that was the novelty of our, uh, and this was a, I, I forgot to write, this is an immediate consequence of our CRM and this CRM is joined uh, with Balaj Bahrain, Boris Solomiak, and Adam Spivak. So this is a joint uh, result with Adam Spivak, Boris Solomiak, and Balaj Bahrain. Is uh, it sufficient in, this, in the place of transverse algebra to assume weaker transverse algebra? That's not, not infinite function. We do not know. We do not know. The, this is the result that we have. And, and we do not know any, we do not know any result for any, any uh, any assumption less than transversal. A strong uh, We do need this. Uh, actually, there are even stronger sources of DV. Marius uh, and Boris Colomia, when we prove for parabolic iterative functions, we know the transversality, but not the transversality, even worse transversality. If you saw that, you would see that this is a minor transversality, then some of books that I mentioned transversality. So, I think because in the case of real knowledge, I'm sorry. If what I am asking for is true, then for a real analogy, you don't need any assumption. Uh, but and this is in the paper by Kasselblatt and Schmeling in different situations. Yeah, they same. just but, get, but, get rid of any assumption but, assuming real analogy. Uh, yeah, but it is not, uh, not the case here. For, for us, it doesn't happen. I, I wanted to say a couple of words about the proof. Uh, it comes from CRM4 uh, uh, in, in, in a certain way. I, I will not be very much specific. So this is just a consequence because uh, this mapping is deep sheet. And then in CRM4, there were some uh, conditions with yellow color. Uh, uh, if you remember at the very beginning of the talk, there were the yellow yellow inequalities and the yellow inequalities follows from the fact that this mapping what I'm showing you is deep sheets and that's why uh, the CRM uh, uh, follows from uh, CRM4. But the CRM really says that if you take the most natural measure, the measure which is the Gibbs measure for the geometric potential, then for almost all parameter, you know everything. This is what the CRM uh, says. Do you have any estimates on the dimension of the exceptional center? No, we don't. We don't. Uh, uh, actually, our method was a, a change, how to say. We, we improved the method of, of uh, uh, the Paris plug, and they do have. So it's a very good question. They do have, but we don't. And I don't know why uh, this paper is already 77 pages. So it's, uh, uh, we should congratulate the uh, 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 referee that uh, we uh, <laughs> that it, uh, uh, it, it was something I, I can tell you. And our uh, 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 intention is not that much uh, improving in this direction, but we would like to change one very big drawback that this is and uh, this lambda is a number and not a vector. It would be far better to have a vector. And we have written already many pages. Uh, uh, with, with Adam Spiva, Boris Solomiak, and Bolas Barain, and we believe that it is true. But if this is very complicated, then it is very, very complicated. Uh, but, but nevertheless, this is but the next thing that we really would like to do because it's far better. That would be far better. Uh, okay, so well, I, I, I cannot stand. Vilma, could, could you could you switch it? Uh, I, I I need to need to to say if I if I said this. I, I, I need to tell you why, why the most natural, the most natural family for this transfer, uh, for, for this transversality is as follows. You are given this mappings F1, Fm, these are C1 plus eta, if you want C2, Mark Polyphon like C2 better, I think he's right. And uh, that's C2 and, and contractions, and you have them. And how do you perform a very nice, very natural 
uh, transfers are family, but you do it is that you write F1 plus T1 and Fn plus Tn, T1, Tn are, so this vector, this is a vector T1 in M, and this is an element of R M. okay? And then uh, you need, this is almost good, so you would say that F T, and is this a transfer of family? Almost. So, for example, if you assume uh, that the norm of the derivative, uh, so that the, uh, the norm, this, this infinite norm of the derivative is smaller than one half, and actually you could assume that the sum of the two biggest uh, norms is smaller than one. So if the biggest norm is 0 0.9 and all other people have norm less than 0 0.1, it is enough. But never mind. If you assume this, then this family is actually a transverse R family, but it's a multi-parameter transverse R family, and it's very good. And, and this is really the real motivation that we want to extend, because if we extend it from one parameter to, to multiple parameters, then you, you see, you are given such an iterated function system and you add, this is just a number you add. It means that you grab the graph and you move up or down just a little bit. You may grab it. Now, so it, it, it means that just a little perturbation gives you a transfer of family. And that would be a huge achievement and believe that this is true, but it requires a lot of work. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, I will never finish this talk actually, because, but never mind. <laughs> and this is what I do when I teach in class. Some of the <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. So it's uh, um, so now, now. Now I would like to tell you, as I promised you, after twenty minutes, I really uh, do applications, and then I will finish it at the end of this forty-five minutes because the second part I like to talk about something else. So the first thing is place dependent probability. So what does it mean? Take the simplest case, have similar iterative function system. It could be C2 contracting mappings on the line. It would be exactly as good as this. But nevertheless, I would have similar. And if you write have similar, then yet again, P is a probability vector. At a certain point, P will become Q, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Q is as good as P for me. For probably whenever I write Q or P, it is probability vector. And then what you see over here, this is the definition of the self similar measure. The self similar measure, which corresponds to this iterative function system and this probability vector. That's why we write nu. It corresponds to S and P, and it satisfies this. Now, just because this is very trivial identity holds, you can rewrite six in the form of seven, where G is any particular continuous function. And you now see why I really need uh, more than one. Uh, yeah. Okay, and we continue. So this was a, a self similar measure. This is the way as most people define it. But you can rewrite it equivalently well in this way. You see that the integral of g against the measure is the sum, and here are the probabilities and so on. But if you want place dependent self similar measure, then instead of this p, which is a probability, you write the function pi, where pi is non negative or maybe positive. The point is that at every x, they sum up to one. That's why they are probabilities and place dependent probabilities. Now, this uh, yellow uh, equation is uh, uh, it, uh, written in this form equivalently. Then. So either this way or that way, you can imagine that these are the place dependent probabilities. And I would like to write it down because otherwise it's easy to forget and at least everybody can remember 
what we are talking about. So please depend on probability. Thank you very much. Mu B is equal to sum one to n integral and S i minus one B and P i X B nu X. This is the place dependent uh, probability. Uh, uh, okay, thank you very much. So it's, um, uh, okay. And then, uh, the entropy for such a place dependent probability measure is given by this very, very familiar formula. And the Yakunov exponent is also given by this also very familiar formula. It is the same as uh, in the self similar case, just the, the probabilities which are in self similar case constant are replaced by functions which functions add up to one at every point. So this is the Yakunov exponent Mark Kolikot spoke about, and this is the, the, the entropy everybody spoke about. And then it was proved by Yaroshev and Rons that this uh, uh, upper estimate hold. Probably Marius can tell us that maybe it had been proven earlier, uh, and maybe by Marius said he proposed but certainly Yaroshev and Mark uh, uh, Rons proved this. Uh, uh, or, or, or whatever they put it, uh, it was not contracting, but contracting with error is so much, much higher generality, but certainly it follows. And, and Marius also wrote a lot of papers uh, in this direction. Maybe it follows uh, at least one decade earlier, but, uh, but uh, certainly this is one place uh, where it was verified that this holds. Uh, uh, so, uh, one more time, this is the uh, well, sometimes the same measure. So this place dependent measure, which is uh, for for sets, it looks like this, uh, and for for uh, continuous functions in this way, sometimes it is called stationary measure. So let me call it stationary measure because it's easier. So from now on, I will call them stationary measure. They are unique and they exist. Oh, sorry. One and Blau proved it. Uh, so, and they are good for us because if you remember in this theorems I mentioned, we always like the Gibbs measures, and these measures are actually Gibbs measures. So, if you take this potential, this potential, this phi, is a very good potential. We like this kind of potentials. It's not exactly this but resembles to this. So this is a good looking potential. And then you take this good looking potential and then uh, you use the usual definition of the push forward measure. And then this new, uh, this new, which, which appears here, what I call stationary measure, earlier I called it place dependent measure. This new is the push forward measure of the Gibbs measure mu, which Gibbs measure mu is the Gibbs measure for the potential phi. So there are too many things at, in the same time. One is this new, which is the object of our study. And we would like to express the object of our study as a Gibbs measure. If you want Gibbs measure, then you need a potential, a potential which is defined in the symbolic space. So this is a potential in the symbolic space. We grab this potential and we uh, the, uh, construct the corresponding Gibbs measure. The mu is the Gibbs measure for this potential. Now we have this measure on the symbolic space and using the natural projection, we just push it down and we get a push forward measure. And this push forward measure is going to be our stationary measure. So our stationary measure is a Gibbs measure, which is good because then we can use uh, theorems, what we proved earlier. Now I came to really the, our first example, which first example is connected to two things. One of them is the Bernoulli convolution, and the other one is a kind of slanted Baker maps, which was investigated by Schmeling and Trubetskoy. And these two things come together here. Now, start with this iterated function system. 
Those people who like proctal geometry have seen this iterative function system several times because in the Bernoulli convolutions, you know, uh, uh, well, well, that was this uh, uh, iterative function system basically considered by Erdős in the 1930s. So, so uh, when, when you speak about Bernoulli convolutions, then this is the iterative function system which is behind. So what you do with this, that you take uh, such an interval, this is lambda, thank you very much. I think it is one over one minus lambda, and this is negative uh, one over one minus lambda, and this whole interval is called an i. Now, what you do it is that you define two iterative functions, uh, you define an iterative function system which consists of two functions. Uh, one of them is uh, psi zero. Unfortunately, uh, so this is psi uh, zero lambda. It sends uh, this big interval onto this interval, and the other one is psi one. Uh, sorry, psi one lambda, uh, which sends the big interval onto this interval. And when uh, uh, when uh, this uh, lambda is big enough, if lambda is bigger. The one half, and that is the only interesting question. Then these two intervals uh, intersect each other. It was a big question of Erdős, and lots of lots of other people considered that if you take uh, uh, the probabilities one half, one half, so constant probabilities and equal probabilities, whether uh, if you take this this measure, which is the infinite product measure corresponding to one half, one half, you take this infinite product measure. Whether the push forward measure of this infinite product measure is absolute continuous or not, and we still do not have complete answer of this question. But then they consider the probabilities one half, one half. Instead of that, we consider a place dependent probabilities one half plus something and one half minus the same thing. And then we form, thank you very much. That is good because now we need colors, and I hope that the colors will be somewhat visible. Uh, uh, the course on the screen are always different. Now, what is this operator? I hope that I am not mistaken if I say that this is a rural operator, and you see the colors. Here is this color green, and the green comes here, P0. And then this is blue, and the blue was this function. You see, this was blue, this function, it came over here. And then this is purple, or I don't know, almost red, reddish, or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, oh, on the screen, this and that were different. Let me say this is purple, and then it comes over here, and let me say this is red, and it came over there. So this is the operator uh, that uh, we consider, and the fixed point of this operator, the, the dual, you consider the dual operator, and the fixed point of this dual operator is this place dependent Bernoulli convolution measure. So this is a very natural operator, which can be assigned to this iterated function system and the probabilities, place dependent probabilities. This is the natural rural operator. You take its uh, dual, and the fixed point of this dual is the object of our study, uh, uh, which is exactly this place dependent probability. Now, I would like to give you a motivation. So we now don't go ahead, we go uh, perpendicular. This is just a motivation. Why are we interested in this measure? Because it is related to a very natural dynamical system with singularities. Namely, if you take this law L, what we have just defined, then this L uniformly for every continuous function uniformly converges to, 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 to the, the right hand side. And then using bounded convergence theorem, you get that this ratio, that this sum uh, converges to this product measure weekly. What is F? I am going to define F on the next slide. So, uh, and, and uh, just uh, this measure, what we introduced, can be uh, used for uh, the understanding of the dynamics of S. So I would like to define F. Here is a not inviting definition of F. This is a definition uh, with formula. I do not like formula that much, I like picture. 
So this is a much better one. The, 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 this picture was also prepared by Paul Asbaray, I guess. Uh, 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 and then uh, uh, you, you see uh, uh, Bolas also very much like these mappings, and uh, originally Schmeling and Trubetskoy considered it. Everybody knows in the room what is Baker transformation. This is something similar. So when you take uh, this uh, lower part, then this lower part, according to the formula, but I would say in the most natural way, this uh, more gray, not light gray, but more gray, dark gray part is sent to the product of this interval and zero. So this big, so this big, this is the image in the most natural way. So this dark gray goes to this uh, interval. And the light gray uh, goes to this uh, rectangle in the most natural way. You see the, the same kind of uh, overlap which appears in this formula. And that's why uh, they, they have something to do with each other. So going back, uh, it says that uh, we can learn something about the dynamics of this interesting. Uh, so this is a, a hyperbolic uh, mapping with, with singularities. Uh, uh, so so and, and because of this uh, convergence, what you see here, uh, actually, uh, we can use this measure to understand something about the dynamics of this app. Uh, to be more precise, uh, I just like to, to do this. Uh, to be more precise, the bauer sinai measure for, for this mapping, for this mapping, there is a bauer sinai measure, and the bauer sinai measure is a uh, absolute continuous if and only if our place dependent probability measure is absolute continuous. And the Bauer Sinai measure has the right dimension, the dimension what it, it should have, uh, exactly if our measure has the what is Bauer Sinai real measure? Do you know what is Bauer Sinai real measure? There is a mapping like that. And then you can define a lot of ergodic measures. But there is a kind of king of the society of ergodic measures, which are invariant for this. And this king is the Bauer Sinai River measure. That is very roughly speaking. The most king? I don't know. <laughs> Just the, the, most, uh, the most important uh, measure. I don't want to get more details, but 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 when you want to understand the dynamic story uh, uh, of this person, it's good to know about the Bauer Sinai measure and the, the absolute continuity and the dimension of the Bauer Sinai measure is related to our place dependent probabilities. Now going back to that, uh, that was just a kind of. Uh, uh, motivation, why we are interested in. So go back, come back to this. Now, this psi lambda is the iterative function system we mentioned. We mentioned what are the probabilities, and then we have this push forward, uh, the, the, the parameter dependent dips measure, because we, we uh, discussed that such a measure is always a Gibbs measure, as, as you can see that. Uh, so this is a, a Gibbs measure. For, for this potential. Uh, and that's why uh, we can uh, check that in, in CRM4, uh, this, this yellow conditions, you remember that CRM4 was the CRM we started with, and there were two yellow inequalities, and the two yellow inequalities hold uh, for this uh, potential. And because uh, so, then we can go further. So what we need to do it is that we will need somehow the, the ratio of entropy over a Yakunov exponent. But in our case, for this very special system, what I, I described, uh, uh, where is this? It's over there. Here are the mappings and the probabilities. When you put everything together, then it is absolutely trivial that the entropy is given by this integral and the Yakunov exponent is given by that integral. So we have everything almost. Uh, the only thing that I need to mention, it is uh, the, the transversality 
And uh, uh, for this iterated functional system, Schmerkin and Sol Solomia proved that this is the transversality region. So we are if we are in this transversality region, which was verified by Schmerkin and Solomia, then we have that the Hausdorff dimension uh, of this place dependent probability is what it needs to be. And whenever this ratio is bigger than one, uh, then, uh, then we have uh, absolute continuity. But I do not have much time. I prefer to, to talk about four applications, but I, I, I am left really a couple of minutes only for the second application. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, as a result of this, uh, this is what we know about the phase dependent probability. So for almost all uh, elements uh, from this region, for almost all elements from this region, there was rho and there was uh, uh, lambda. And uh, for almost all element of this region, you have absolute continuity and you have singularity on the other region. So we could, we could achieve something with it. But what I really like to do during the remaining six minutes of this part of the talk, uh, my, my favorite application, I, I, I skip, uh, there are a lot of things, but I'm sorry, I, I just like to go to the, the place because otherwise I lose the chance to speak about that. But uh, I, this was some more general stuff. So, but what I wanted to say it is that if you take some similar iterated function system and you consider the natural measure and you push it forward, then you get even for the self similar some new result. But I would like to show you a very specific one, a very simple one. This is a very, very simple iterated function system. Can you imagine more simple one? Yes. Namely, if this is lambda and this is lambda, if both of them are lambda, then basically you are back to this situation. Uh, but this is inhomogeneous. So if inhomogeneous means that the contraction ratios are different, but if you are talking about inhomogeneous iterated function system, there is no more simple one than this on the entire planet. You cannot imagine more simple inhomogeneous iterated function system than this. And we can say something new about this using our theorem, namely, uh, here are two parameters, and we do not like two parameters because, as I mentioned, our theory works only with one parameter. Uh, so what we do it is that we would like to in, uh, investigate uh, this uh, uh, this uh, two parameter system. Uh, yet again, we do need transversality, and then uh, uh, here, we, if you could please, thank you. Uh, uh, here. And as I mentioned previously, it follows from result of Solomiak and Schmerkin that this is 0 0.5 and this is 0. Point whatever is written over there, 6, 6, 8. So we take this, this is not 0, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.668, uh, okay. And then here is lambda 1 and here is lambda 2. And then we were lucky because a person who is called uh, Nain Hauserer, uh, uh, Nain he was a student of, uh, of Schmel. So he proved transversality in the following way. That he said that we draw a line like this. This means lambda two is equal to C times lambda one. He draws a line. And then on this line, on this particular line, you have only one parameter. And you have transversality on this uh, interval for this line. So what we do it is that we, for every C, which is positive, we consider such a family. This is a one-parameter family then. And then we apply our theorem for this one-parameter family. And then we use Hubini's theorem when we go around for all C. And uh, using this three, actually we can use, we can handle this two parameter. And then what we get it is that if you take the natural measure, because this is the natural measure, what is the natural measure? How do you get the natural measure? Well, this is lambda one, lambda two. So what you say lambda one raised to the power S plus lambda two raised to the power S is equal to one. The, the solution of this, 
So what you do when you form the natural measure, you say the first probability is this, and the second probability is this. These are just constant probabilities, not race dependent. From this P1 and P2, you form a, an infinite product measure, you call it mu, but this mu does depend for lambda 1 and lambda 2. You see that for different lambda 1 lambda 2, the measure is different because P1 P2 depends on it's not the same. It won't be the same if this system was a, a homogeneous system. But because the system is not homogeneous, therefore P1 P2 depends on lambda 1 lambda 2. So mu depends. And then you just take the push forward measure of this lambda 1 lambda 2, and it gives you nu lambda 1 lambda 2. Okay. And and, and and what we can say, it is that this behaves well. That is, uh, on this uh, 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 parameter uh, domain, whenever lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is bigger than 1, then this push forward measure, this natural measure for almost all values of lambda 1, lambda 2 is absolute continuous. So we could say with this theorem, uh, even uh, for the self signal, thank you very much. I don't know which one. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So it's uh, even for the self similar case, we could say something new. I prepared with two more examples, and it would take actually now I see more than 45 minutes, but I would like to speak about something different uh, in the remaining 45 minutes. If anybody happens to be interested in, the remaining two uh, uh, examples, then I am very happy to send uh, uh, my, my slides on the one hand, and you can find our paper uh, with uh, uh, Adam Spivak, Boris Solomiak, and, and Baraj Balaj. All of these results are joined with Adam Spivak, Boris Solomian, and, and Baraj Baraj. You, you can find uh, these all, all of these examples in our paper, but I would like to, as I promised, talk about a completely different thing during my remaining 45 minutes. And on this note, I would like to uh, start the break, if you agree. Okay. See you at the Thank you very much. Can I? Okay, can I? Good, thank you. Uh, so, I am talking about a slightly different topic, uh, iterated function system on the line, not necessarily self-similar, although I will write sometimes self-similar, but not necessarily self-similar. And we are interested in uh, the overlapping situation. Uh, the, the results are uh, slightly published or partially published uh, with Istvan Koloshvari uh, in an in a appendix of a completely different paper, a paper about uh, self-affine sets. But we actually had a manuscript, but we never published uh, because in this paper that I just mentioned, we needed to use part of them and the other parts we has never been published. So, so part of those what I'm talking about appeared in this paper with Istvan Koloshvari and is going to appear in our book uh, joined with Balash Baray and Boris Solomiak. So no dimension co no condition and its equivalent. So the, the, the situation is that we consider a, a network on, on one dimension, either a C1 plus eta, or let me say C2 iterated function system, which uh, consists of uh, all um, contractions, or a self-similar iterated function system is here r i r in modulus less than one but different from zero. Uh, so so let me say that uh, just for easier setup, I I stick to this now, and then uh, pi is as usual uh, the the natural projection and sigma is uh, as always uh, the symbolic space and a is this alphabet and little m always the number of mappings for me, which was K for Mark. Uh, and here is a, a, a funny uh, partition uh, of sigma, which is a measurable partition for those who, who know what this means. Uh, I just like to define and I will show you a picture how to imagine all of this. So now usually I'm going to write Q for the probability vectors, and I write bigger than zero, meaning that all the elements are uh, positive, so the uh, sum of the components is equal to one. Uh, 
And then uh, mu q, I always write mu q for this infinite product measure. And then uh, uh, the self-similar measure, uh, I'm sorry, this is not S. In many cases, it is S, but this time it is not S. This is a typo, it should be H, because H is the, the system. So new HQ uh, is the put for part, and this is the self-similar measure corresponding to the iterative function system H and probability vector Q. We write lambda i for the cylinder. So we apply h i. i is a finite word, just like this. Now, now i is a finite word. And then we apply, when, when I say h i, it means that the consecutive uh, iterative application of h i one compose with h i n. And then this is the cylinder, the part of the attractor, which is uh, presented in this way. So I mentioned this uh, very important partition because it is a big question that uh, how many, when, when you have this iter iterative function system with overlaps, then this whole 45 minutes will be about how many uh, uh, codes one point has. Every point has at least one code, but some point has more than one code. And then here is a code. So this is from symbolic space. We go down to the attractor. So here we are on the attractor. And then we go back to the symbolic space. If there is only one code, then the set consists of i. But this has, can consist of uncountably many uh, points as well. And, and this is a partition of sigma. It is uh, called Lebesgue uh, uh, me me measurable partition. Uh, uh, and uh, there is, uh, and I will explain everything. I just like to, uh, li li like to show a formula. This formula will be very important. Originally, the formula was put by Feng and Hu Hoppa. Uh, uh, this is uh, something better. I'm sorry. Uh, does it? Uh, okay. So, well, something. Um, I'm paying it who? Uh, this is the house of dimension of uh, this push for part measure. So, the house of dimension. Uh, how can you? Uh, uh, how can you get the house of dimension of the measure? We would be very happy if it was entropy divided by Yakunov exponent. But due to the effect of the overlaps, sometimes uh, this black ratio needs to be decreased. This, this H is always zero or positive. We need to uh, decrease, uh, uh, subtract something. And this was called, uh, the, the difference was called projected entropy in the work of uh, Feng and and who? And actually, Antti Kaimaki and Balash Barai wrote a paper about self affine. Uh, 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 and then uh, they gave a much, much uh, easier uh, expression of the same. So they, they, they expressed it is due to Balash Barai and Antti Kaimaki. And you will see that this is really very handy. So everybody understands negative, integral, logarithms. And here is something that I need to explain you. I'm going to explain you on the next slide what, what this is. This means I1, which is the cylinder, which corresponds to the first component of. Uh, you know what is mu q? This is the infinite product. So you understand everything except this. And I am going to explain that uh, on, the, on the next slide. Uh, this is what we will do uh, on the next slide. But uh, first, I would like to show you a picture because I would like to draw always everything. And uh, here we have two things. We have an iterative function system. This is what we have. So th this is on the line. Uh, and, and we also have uh, the <coughs> symbolic space. The symbolic space, and we work a lot in, in the symbolic space, thank you. We work a lot in the symbolic space. So I am happy to draw everything. I would like to draw the symbolic space. How we can draw the symbolic space? The symbolic space is an abstract space, but nevertheless, I would like to draw it. So we have our iterative function system here on the line. And what we do is this, that we artificially construct an iterative function system in the unit square 
uh, with the same number of mappings, in this uh, time it is three, in such a way that the contraction, because this is self similar on the plane also, uh, the contraction ratios are equal to, so the red contraction ratio is the red ratio here, the blue is the blue, and the black is the black. Okay, and then we imagine that these people are disjoint, so there is no overlap on the plane. And then we have this iterated function system H tilde sending the unit square into itself in such a way uh, that the projection of the red square is the red interval, the blue square is the blue interval, the black square is the black interval. So there is a kind of conjugacy in between the system. And you can consider the attractor of this iterated function system on the plane, and we call it lambda tilde. And you can identify the symbolic space. That symbolic space can be identified with the attractor of this iterative. It is isometric. Even the distances can be identified. They are the same. Even the distances are the same. So if you want to, and this is one way, this is how I like to do that. And one way to draw sigma, sigma is actually, sigma is not the unit square. It is not the union of these squares. Sigma is the attractor of this iterative function system. And then what is pi? Pi is the natural projection, always the natural projection. If you have an element of the attractor, it can be identified with an element of the symbolic space and then uh, the natural projection is just the orthogonal projection uh, to the line. This is going to be the coding that I use because then we can draw pictures and that's what I love. So what did we say? What is Psi? You take an eye like this. Now you imagine that this eye is actually an element of this attractor. And then you come down to here to Pi i and you go back with Pi minus one. So this was psi. I just like to write it psi, pi, and you, by definition, was pi minus one, pi, psi. So how can you see, visualize what is psi? Thank you very much. Uh, you take this green uh, uh, segment and you take the intersection of the green segment. This green segment is just about pi i. So it goes this green segment and you take the intersection with lambda tilde and then this intersection. So this is not the full line. This is the intersection of the line with lambda tilde. And then this is basically psi i. That's, that's uh, how you, you, you can see what is uh, psi i. Now I, 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 I owe you to Tell you, what is this measure? This is my purpose. I would like to explain what is this measure. In order to do that, we need to go uh, to Rotlin theorem. Not everybody knows Rotlin theorem, I know, and I do not have now time to explain Rotlin theorem. But Rotlin theorem says basically uh, that what you can do it is that if you are given such a measure mu q uh, on the uh, on sigma then you can disintegrate the measure. This is almost like a Kupini theorem, like see, this, you have this mu here, over here, and then you have this psi, which are uh, this, uh, uh, so the intersection of the vertical lines with the, with the uh, attractor of, of tilde attractor. And then this measure mu is disintegrated into uh, measures on this, these are all probability measures and these are disintegrated. There is a marvelous description of this Rocklin theorem in Mario Schulbarski and uh, Felix Kritisky's book. Uh, and uh, there is another good description in Einsiedler and Ward book, but they use not measurable partitions, but they use uh, uh, sigma algebra. So, so the, the, then the, the proofs become easier, but what we need to use always, it is like this uh, partition. So, so one more time, what is this measure? I promised you to explain. Thank you, Wilma. Uh, what is this measure? This measure 
is just the, the measure which comes from this disintegration of the measure. And geometrically, what you can imagine it is that you have the measure here on, on this lambda tilde, and then you disintegrate the measure according to these vertical lines. So this is the, the, the measure mu I C. These are the conditional measures like in probability theory. And then this fantastic theorem, which was originally FANCU, but made it more, much more user friendly uh, by Bolas from Baran and Andy Karimaki, that what you need to subtract to get the real effect of overlap. This is because this is an overlapping system. If there were no overlaps, then this should be the, the, the uh, dimension. But because we have overlap, maybe maybe we need to subtract something. And what we need to subtract is this. So just have a look at this expression because this is really a marvelous expression. Let me tell you why it is so good. This uh, yellow part of the expression is a number which is either one or zero. The only thing we are interested in about H, whether H is positive or H is zero. It cannot be anything but positive or zero. Now, uh, this is very important because H is positive, then you have dimension drop. If H is zero, you have no dimension drop. So no dimension drop is connected to the fact that this integral is zero. Now, what is this integral? The integral is the logarithm of the yellow person. How do you get that the integral is zero if this logarithm is zero almost always? Because this uh, this, this person cannot pass it, uh, it, it cannot be positive. Uh, how to say it, it cannot be positive because this is either zero, either one or smaller than one. So this person is either negative or zero. But how could this all be uh, uh, zero only if this yellow one is equal to one almost surely? Because if this is equal to one, then the logarithm of one is zero. Zero, and then you integrate zero. So this is the only way because the measure, this is a probability measure, never bigger than one. The only way is that this is almost surely equal to one. If this is almost surely equal to one, then the logarithm is, is almost surely zero and the integral is almost surely zero. So the question of dimension drop is actually whether or not this yellow person is almost surely equal to one or not. Uh, uh, and that's very, very good. So we would like to uh, uh, set a, a number of conditions. Uh, first of all, no dimension drop condition, MDD, no dimension drop. Uh, this means uh, that uh, for all probability vector, uh, we always assume that these measures are small. So the entropy divided by ocular exponent is not bigger than one. So for all probability vectors for which this uh, holds, the host or dimension is what it should be. So this H over there is zero. So there is no effect of uh, the, the, the overlaps. This is one important condition. This is what we all would like to compare to everything. Here is a condition we know little about, but it's natural. This is the almost unique coding condition. It says, that whenever this uh, probability vector is small, in a sense that the ratio is smaller than equal to one, then you can find an exceptional set. Easy to remember this exceptional set for Hungarian participant, because this is a bad set and bad in Hungarian Ross. So this is uh, the Ross. I'm sorry for those who are not Hungarian, but, but this is the, the, the Ross set. Uh, 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 this is the Ross set in a sense, this is the exceptional set that it has measured zero. But if you choose a, an I, which is not in this bad set, then uh, this, this psi, uh, this class consists of one element. What does it mean, this class? Well, it means that the, the, the uh, coding, here is I, thank you. We project it down, this is phi I, and we would like to know how many codes phi i has. So we go back to consider this, how many elements it has. It has only one element because we cannot have less than one element. i is always an element of this. So there is no other process here. That's the good thing. So almost unique coding means <laughs> that for almost all i, when you push down i, 
that, that, that this person has on the bottom. Thank you very much. So this is the next, we know a little about this, interestingly. We would like to know more, but we do not. Uh, uh, so, uh, and then there is one more, which is uh, less, uh, less, how to say, uh, natural, the almost unique condition. And earlier I said that R stands for Ross in Hungarian, which is bad. Now B stands for bad because this is the first letter of bad in English. So this is the bad set. The bad set means that I, 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 I'm sorry, Vilma, I, I need to draw. This is a less natural condition. Imagine that this is a sigma. This is the symbolic space. Now the bad set, this is the bad set. This is the bad set, and the measure of the, uh, we, we have this condition. The condition holds if this bad set has zero measure, and what you have it is that if you choose an I, uh, which is out of the bad set, and you go down, you get pi I, then on this part of psi I, so this is psi, I, but but you, you do not uh, talk about this. So so not exactly psi i, but psi i minus the back. So so you choose an, an i which is uh, not from the bed. You go down. This is pi i, and then you come back. Then you don't talk about this. You just talk about the part of uh, this is pi minus or pi i, the part which is not in the bed. And then uh, uh, here, you can find only this person, okay? So this person has no other, uh, so, so if you choose i, uh, such that i is not an element of uh, the bed, uh, and, uh, uh, and if you choose, uh, J, which is also not an element of the bed, and pi i is equal to pi j, uh, then i is equal to j. So if you restrict your set, you take the symbolic space, you take away the bad set, and you take and you restrict yourself for, for this set, which is the symbolic space minus the bad set, then on this set, what I show you, pi is one to pi. Okay. This is the weak almost unique condition. Thank you very much. This is the weak almost unique condi uh, condition. Okay, and then there will be one more condition, but not now uh, uh, for, for a while. This three is enough. Is it uh, clear for everyone, or shall I repeat anything? The almost unique is much more natural. The almost unique condition says that you have this R, which is the Ross in Hungarian, so the bad set, you forget about the bad set, and then the coding is one to one otherwise. The, the weak almost unique is a little bit bad because here you take away the bad set and only, only to the restriction to sigma minus the bad set, you have that the coding is one to one. Now, the interesting thing is what is written here in Formula 4, uh, that the no dimension of condition, the no dimension drop that for every self-similar measure, the dimension is what it has to be. The no dimension drop condition is equivalent to the, to the weak almost unique condition, not the almost unique, but the weak almost unique condition. We do not know if it is equivalent to the almost unique condition. We just know that this is perfectly equivalent. So if and only if. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and here is actually a third uh, uh, assertion with which these two blue people are, are equivalent. This, they, they are equivalent, and the way that we prove is uh, that this no dimension drop is equivalent to the weak almost unique, the weak almost unique, which is which is over there. They are equivalent, and then they equivalent the following, that if Q is a small vector in the sense that the ratio is smaller than one, then actually this mu i psi, you remember what was mu i psi, uh, so we have, I'm sorry, uh, uh, we, we, we have this picture, uh, it is better to, the what was mu, mu i psi, that mu is the measure 
uh, here on sigma, and this uh, mu i psi is the conditional measure on this green line. So this is mu i star. And then uh, no dimension drop and weak almost unique condition, both of them equivalent with this funny condition that assuming that entropy of a Yopner exponent is small, assuming that this conditional measure is an atomic, it's a Dirac measure. This is a Dirac measure. The conditional measure is Dirac measure for almost all R. So this is equivalent with the no dimension condition. So it doesn't say, it doesn't say that uh, you have only one point or on a typical vertical line like this. Maybe you have uncountably many points, but the, the conditional nature is a Dirac measure. So that's that's the good thing uh, uh, that that we can say. Uh, and uh, and uh, and, the, and the proof is is written down and, and the places that I mentioned uh, and and I am not sure that I really have uh, too much time to 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 get into that uh, uh, because I would like to talk about a couple of couple of other things and, and it is a bit, bit technical. So it's uh, 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 on the one hand it depends on this. Uh, on, on, on this uh, uh, very nice uh, equality. On the other hand, uh, uh, we, we, we should know something more about these measurable partitions, which uh, uh, relates to this psi. Uh, and uh, the, so the, the, the proof is, is available in our joint paper with, with Istvan Koloshvari. I, I also wrote it here, at this, I wrote something, uh, uh, but, uh, but maybe maybe I would not uh, uh, get into details. Uh, um, well, it's um, because uh, I also would like to talk about uh, uh, yeah. So 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 one more thing about all of this that that uh, of course uh, if we know that the almost unique condition holds. If the almost unique condition holds, then the weak almost unique condition also holds. And the weak almost unique condition is equivalent to the no dimension drop condition. So if you have almost unique condition, then you have no dimension drop. So the dimension does not drop. Uh, but we do not know it uh, vice versa. OK. Um, Mm. Good. Uh, I I would like to speak a little bit. Maybe I come back to the to the proof later because because you know I I really like to finish, uh, uh, and and uh, and I like to to mention one more. Uh, I would like to mention one more one more separation condition. Uh, uh, and this has not been published at, at any places. Uh, let me call it ADA for whatever reasons. So this uh, separation condition ADA uh, holds uh, for the self-similar iterated function system on the line if every probability vector and for every epsilon, for mu q almost all i, there exists a constant. There are too many things here. Uh, if this uh, if this yellow uh, inequality holds, uh, I would like to show you uh, what this means uh, on the on the board. So thank you. So yet again, this all is interesting if uh, we are in the uh, uh, situation when we have uh, 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 when we have overlaps. Uh, so uh, so what happens? It is that uh, we consider an I uh, which is 
from the symbolic space, and uh, somehow this is pi. And uh, we go to a certain level n. Uh, this should hold for all n. So we go to a certain level n, and here is somehow a level n cylinder, and this is uh, lambda i n. So lambda i n is simply h i n applied for lambda. So this is the the cylinder level and cylinder which corresponds to i. Okay, and now you consider this sigma n is just a collection. Sigma n is the collection of all level and cylinders. So now you consider level and cylinders which are different from this person, which are different from this level and cylinder. Let me draw it with a certain color. So for example, it can happen that here is another level and cylinder, and this is lambda, uh, what was it? Uh, lambda omega. So this is lambda omega, this is another uh, level and cylinder. And uh, what we would like to do it is that uh, we take all possible level and cylinders, and we would like to measure the distance between pi i, this is pi i, the distance between pi i and the nearest level and cylinder. So this is the distance that appears there. This is distance between pi i and the nearest uh, level and cylinder. So lambda omega, when omega is a level and cylinder, as such that omega is not equal to i n. So, so we, we just take this uh, that this the distance uh, from the uh, from from this person, and we take okay, and we would like to compare this distance uh, uh, to the size uh, of that particular uh, to the size of that. Uh, cylinder, level and cylinder, which uh, corresponds to the size of level and cylinder, which corresponds to I. So this distance is compared, and this distance needs to be not too small. So constant times e to the power epsilon n. But the good thing is uh, that for every epsilon, that's very important that this condition needs to happen for every uh, epsilon uh, and for every epsilon you have such a constant which constant can depend both on epsilon and i uh, but but this is the this is the, the assumption uh, that so so this ratio what you see here it is relatively big and so this person tends to zero as n tends to zero this tends to zero exponentially but still it is bigger than that this is the condition what we call n for whatever reasons uh, and why is this condition good this is what i would like to explain you why is this a good condition i have some 20 minutes to explain you. First of all, if you have this condition, then there is going to be no dimension drop. Why? Because if you write a G Q epsilon, G Q epsilon is the element of the symbolic space uh, such that, uh, that this inequality holds. Uh, so this uh, uh, distance of pi, I uh, and the, the union of uh, lambda omega when omega is from sigma n and the omega is not equal to I n. So, so this distance uh, divided by the length lambda I n uh, when, when uh, this distance is bigger than g to the g the part epsilon n. Uh, this is the type. <laughs> and uh, if uh, 
you choose uh, okay and uh, uh, if you choose uh, well, this is a full measure set. We, we, that was an assumption here that for almost all, mu q almost all, this happens. And the assumption is that this set is a full measure set. Now, if this set is a full measure set, then what can we say about uh, the, thank you, uh, the, this, this lower local dimension? So for for this uh, expression, what you get if you if you just multiply, you you, you just move uh, this person to the other side. You move this person to the other side, then then you can get delta n, and then uh, this local uh, uh, lower local dimension can be written as the logarithm of the measure of the ball uh, center that i and uh, radius delta n and logarithm of delta n divided by logarithm of delta n. And uh, how do we proceed here? This is a trick which is a very useful trick when you, when you deal with uh, uh, systems with overlapping construction. Because, thank you very much, if you want to understand whether or not you have dimension drop, then what you need to understand really, it is, uh, it is somehow the local dimension. And if you want to understand the local dimension, which means that you would like to compute the logarithm of a ball centered at a certain point divided by the logarithm of the radius of this ball, then you could have two possible approaches. This is what I would like to tell you. You could have two possible approaches. One of them is that you take such a ball, this is X and this is R, and this is uh, BXR, and you would like to estimate the measure of this ball. This is one approach, but this is very difficult. Because as you see, when you have this ball, basically this ball is this blue, and there are these these uh, red people which come, they are the enemies. They are the enemies because they destroy the local dimension. This person pi i is very angry that I would like to have the good local dimension, which is this. And then the enemy comes and this person is enemy and this enemy destroy my local dimension. He is angry. And that's why it's called enemy. And then ADA is exponential distance from the enemy, basically. That's why the, the name. So, so the, the point is that there are two approaches. You would like to say that, okay, I compute the measure of this ball. But what does it mean then? You need to take the measure of the blue. The blue comes from the, uh, the, the symbolic space. And also the measure which comes for this uh, from the symbolic space. And then there can be very, very many level and cylinders, but you need to take into consideration and add up. And it's very difficult, very difficult to follow this path. There is another approach, which is very useful. And namely, what we do it is, uh, what is written over here, that we do not, uh, we, we, we do not compute the, the measure of this entire ball. We just go to level n, and on level n, we would like to understand what is the little, uh, little interval center that pi i. What is the little interval you see here, like? What is the little interval when there is no enemy? There is no anybody with different first step continent. Do you understand this? Is this uh, clear for everyone? You do not estimate this person. You estimate how far you can get from pi i to have no enemy of level n. Is this, is this clear for everyone? And then you see that this assumption is actually very, very important. Because what does this assumption say? It says that the first enemy on level n is of this distance. You multiply by this, uh, that person. Uh, this is basically what we do. Thank you very much, Rima. So, so this is our idea uh, that what we say it is, 
that instead of this ball, because what do we want to give? It is to give a good lower bound. But the good lower bound would mean a good upper bound for the measure, because what we divide with, it is a negative number. So for this, we need to give a good upper bound. And what is the good upper bound? What is the delta n? Delta n is this little yellow distance. You see this. But instead of that, we actually write something bigger. Namely, we take here the entire measure of this blue interval. Uh, we can do that because, because uh, on this yellow interval, only uh, the content uh, uh, is uh, uh, present, which comes from I. All other level and cylinders are keep away from this interval. So the measure of this uh, little interval, what you see over here, the measure is, it comes entirely from this I uh, N. So, so this, is, uh, this is easy. This is an easy upper bound. The, the question is that, okay, but, but what is this delta N? And what you have for this delta N, you know, if, if you, thank you very much. So what do we have for that time? Uh, delta N, as you see, the distance from the enemy, so it is delta N is actually lambda I N multiplied by A to the power negative epsilon N, and that is a constant. So uh, you can understand uh, this denominator if you divide by one over N up uh, uh, in the nominator and also in the denominator. So if you divide by one over n, then this is logarithm of delta n, which is one over n times the logarithm of this lambda i n uh, plus, and then you have this one over n times, and you take logarithm, and here's this logarithm, here's that. So eventually you end up with epsilon, and this doesn't matter. Uh, one over n times logarithm of the constant. This tends to zero, it doesn't matter. So what you actually have, it is that if you divide by one over n here and one over n there, then the total effect, what we eventually get at the uh, end of the day, is this negative epsilon, which negative epsilon comes here. And this is the reason that if you have exponential distance from the enemy, then the dimension, the local dimension, at this uh, situation cannot drop with more than epsilon. But in the definition, uh, what we gave, it was that for every epsilon. So for every epsilon, it does not drop more than negative epsilon. It means that it does not drop. So eventually what you get it is, that if we have this condition, this exponential distance from the enemy condition, which is called Eda, then the dimension does not drop. Uh, so this is a kind of separation condition. And I thank you very much, Vilma. Uh, and I'm sorry. Um, uh, so, so it's, um, I, I just like to show, because I have seven more minutes, couple of things. This is unique, which means that these are those people, when we push it down and come back, then there is only one uh, element, which is I. And, and here is uh, this distance from the enemy on, on level one. So I, I, I drew here this distance from the enemy on level N, and the distance from the enemy on level one is, uh, is L, actually. Uh, so what I want to say is a couple of lemma. Of course, I don't have time for the proofs. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing is that if you have open set condition, then open set condition implies ADA. On the other hand, if you have a transverse R family, then for almost all parameter, you have ADA. Now, what happens if you put these two things together? Uh, then something interesting happens. So you have open set condition, you have ADA, but this says that it can happen that you do not have open set condition, but still you get ADA. <laughs> uh, and and uh, for example, Mark Olicott is still here. So with him, we investigated long, long ago, 
long, long ago. Actually, it was introduced, the following family was introduced by Smorodinsky, Mike Keen, and also Solomiak in, investigated. This was long, long, long done. Uh, which is the sum of a k multiplied by lambda to the power negative k. A goes from zero to infinity, and a k can be anything between zero, one, it cannot be two, but can be three, uh, like this. This is a set. This is, a, and then you can say that that is say lambda is in between. Lambda is is in between one quarter and one third. If you take this, then you are going to have a Cantor set, a self similar Cantor set uh, with, with this overlapping structure. So this is a self similar uh, Cantor set, and uh, uh, Mark Polycott and myself very long ago, this was when we introduced this transferability method for the iterated function system. Uh, it was, I think, 1995 when it was published. Uh, uh, so, so what we proved it was that the dimension uh, for this system uh, is what it needs to be. So it's the similarity dimension. Uh, but also we proved uh, that the Hausdorff uh, measure, uh, this is F lambda, this is S lambda, that the uh, Hausdorff measure of lambda lambda is equal to zero uh, for uh, Lebesgue almost every lambda uh, from this parameter interval. Uh, now, if this is zero, it, it implies no open set condition. So if you have because we have a transversality from this map. Transversality. Transversality is okay. We check transversality. And so this map, this, this family, this family of self similar set has transversality. And then this uh, uh, assertion said that if you have transversality, then you have added for almost all values. But actually, from this, it follows that for almost all values, we have no open set condition. So it can very well happen that you have adder, but you do not have open set condition. So this is not equivalent to the open yet. Yeah. But, but the dimension is not, is it for all lambda? The dimension? Uh, 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 almost all. Almost. We have everybody almost all. Uh, uh, almost all lambda. Sorry, almost all. Everybody almost all. Actually, here, this is the no, no open set condition. Now, Boris told me a couple of months ago proved that for all of us, uh, no open set condition. Uh, actually, it was originally came with, uh, in our joint paper with Mark because I wrote this introduction with Mark and I chemically wrote that that there is no open set condition for this time. We are certain that we will prove it easily later. And then I gave a talk about all of this stuff at University of Holy Cloud in 1994. And then was you are pressed in the audience. You are pressed in Why don't you have open set condition? Because if you have a look at it, suggests that there is no open set condition. But, but there could be some strange open set. And then I knew that, oh, we have not yet proved that. And then later we could be so we have the best together. Uh, that the, indeed for Lubeck almost told you don't have open set condition. And now that we are writing the, the book with Bolas, Barany, and Polycott, well, unfortunately, uh, Solomia, uh, uh, writing the book, then Boris Solomia came out with an easy solution. So I was right that to see if it took 30 years. <laughs> but never mind. The point is. Uh, the, the point is that there is no open set condition. Now we know for, for not any elements, absolutely no open set condition. Uh, but, uh, but the adder holds uh, for almost all elements. So, so if uh, this adder is a condition, it has never been published, never been written down anywhere. But this is a condition, which is a separation condition. And it is more general than the open set condition. If you take open set condition or weak separation property in the appropriate dimension of 
but the effort is diameter measure is possible. And when you take EBA, it can very well happen that the entropy is dimensional measure is zero. And uh, so this is just a more general condition. And uh, uh, maybe this is a good place to finish, Michael. Thank you very much for your <laughs> I'm not sure whether I understand. And uh, there is the forever exile. Yes. But you, if there is an experiment, you can look at for one condition and no dimension drop. Or yeah. there is much too strong to not to have dimension drop. Uh, you know, what, what is for one condition? That you don't have super exponential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you assume there is no even exponential approach with uh, yeah. small signs. So yeah, yeah, but one condition only works for self similar, and then uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. only for self similar. Yeah. This is and then good for not self similar or uh, hyperbolic as for okay. self similar. Okay. I'm sorry, okay. uh, my question was. Uh, so you prove uh, uh, for almost all various uh, statements, are there counterexamples in this thing, uh, for particular lambdas, for instance, uh, in this case uh, uh, of 0, 1, 3, uh, other examples for which there is a dimensional drop? Dimensional drop uh, here. There, there are lots of dimensional drop, but we proved with the uh, uh, Mark Polypot 1995 that the dimensional drop is dense. Is on this, uh, there is a dense countable subset for which you have dimensional drop. Are there any more questions? Then again, Let me say uh, thanks uh, to the organizers. Uh, the most happy, but very happy, used to be. Ah, I'm sorry. But we were not so good. And we have and local organizers, and of course, I can uh, certainly thank you very much for. for uh, for organizing this fantastic event. Uh, thank you.